You are still watching, ways. Now, we'll just go straight into what we found in the news. So I'm going to start with uh, Maury. You know, your story is quite interesting. And since it's coming off of Valentine, let's hear what you, you found for us in the news. I think it's more of sad than interesting. I don't know if the word to use is sad, but I'm just going to um, read it out and let you guys decide. So a final year student in Federal University, Dutse, uh, Chigawa State, uh, identified as Abdullah Bashir, has committed suicide after accusing his girlfriend of cheating on him on Valentine's Day. According to the university's spokesperson, Abdullah Bello, the incident occurred on Monday, 15 February. He stated that the Vice Chancellor, Abdul Karim Sabo, has ordered an investigation on the case. He said the deceased had ingested sniper cake at his apartment in Yawa Quarters, to say. Well, that's, that's, I don't know how to feel about this thing. It's hmm. very honest. Like it's, I, I would say it's just vows, but then to some people, it's more than just vows. If somebody is cheating on you, I don't know how to say this without sound, sounding insensitive, but if somebody is cheating on you, is it now death? Like you're going to die and you're going to now date multiple people. Yeah. And keep dating people and keep dating people and then you are just dead. <laughs> you know, so it's just really, really sad. That, but me, I don't know. Let me hear. Let me hear Lamy's thoughts on it. <laughs> well, um, what I think is people's emotional and mental capacity um, for things like that is different. Mm. And yeah, you know, I agree. Yes, and you don't know what point the guy is in his life at the moment. He might be troubled from home, and that girl might just be his only hope only source of happiness. You might be troubled academically, financially, other areas of life, and this could just be it. And because I've also been suicidal before, so when I see people who, who could actually commit suicide, I understand where they're coming from. So it could also be depression from other areas of life, and it was just an absolute um, opportunity to take the decision. So may so rest in peace here. Yeah. I mean... I mean, Honestly, really I, I, I agree with you because, I, interestingly, I just saw a video on Instagram. This um, actor, Michael, is he a jaw or something? I don't know how to pronounce his surname. Where he was being interviewed by Fumi Yonda and he was talking about his... Um, he, he made three attempts, you know, to take in his own life. Um, when he was 14, I think that was the first one. Then I think when he was 23 or so, or 21 or something. So, he, I mean, when you hear things like this, and I, I totally agree with Lamy, there might have been an underlining depression, you know, that had been there. You know, he just was looking for a reason, and he found one to finally just take the, the bullets, I mean, or, you know, take the, the plunge to, to take up his life, yeah. It's a sad situation. But I don't know why, I don't know. I, I keep saying this to my... <laughs> to my siblings that they never born the man where we go where go make me kill myself like as i mean they've not that man has not been born no because no you, you i mean you must be able to understand who god created you to be you must love your life like for me to kill myself it, it cannot be because of a man you know i don't know i, I don't know that's me <laughs> let me what did you find for us in the news <laughs> okay congratulations to abdul rashid bauer He's, um, he's been nominated as the substantive chairperson of the Economic and Financial Commission, Crimes Commission. 40 year old, quite impressive. I went through his um, resume, through his profile. Go ahead. Very well, has been in EFCC, was part of the Pioneer Cadets. Are we losing Lamy? I think I'm having trouble with Lamy's audio. Um, well, congratulations to him. I was hoping she would break it down because I've not really read his profile. In the profile. industry of the northern extraction, you know, I, I think that um, the president is a bit, um, in as much as I don't want to sound like a tribalistic uh, by God, the truth is we are a federation and we are divided along tribal lines and it should reflect in every decision the government makes, appointments and, you know, infrastructure and all this. So that's all in a bit to be seen to be more inclusive in the spirit of inclusion. So because looking back... 
Oh. I've been there uh, the chairperson um EFCC. I've not seen a northerner, sorry, a southerner. Whether it's south south person, the southwest or southeast, it's always been northerner. So I, I think the government should uh, look into this. Quite impressive. He's a young chap and all that. Quite competent from what I've seen, but mm -hmm. there are other people of other extractions that could have also done the job. Absolutely. I was losing you in and out, but I, if I make sense of what you're saying. And, I, and on, in all honesty, when I saw the appointment, yes, on one side, I was really excited. A 40-year-old person, young, you know, impressive, blah, blah, blah. The other side, I now looked at it again. Must it, must it be that this person is from the North? You know, you know all of these things. Well, what I would say to President uh, Muhammad Buhari is, um, if another president comes tomorrow, maybe the president is an Easternan or a Westernan, and they start to, you know, appoint their own um, people from their own region. I hope people will not raise dust anymore because we've seen it that it's almost like it is impossible to get the president to understand this sensitivity that you're talking about. No, but, but Uwa, Uwa, that must not, Uwa, that should not be institutionalized. Mm. That should not come to it play. It shouldn't be, but I'm just Another saying. Government must not make because we, there, there is no because body. already look at how divided the country Yes. I'm saying that there's nobody that has not said this thing time and time again. And if he's not taking it as a lesson to understand that this thing is actually not so balanced, I don't know what else would, 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 would I mean, would hit the point home. Okay, so... He doesn't seem to care. He that's my point. That's my point. All right, so my story is just to celebrate. You know, I celebrated her yesterday. Just to follow up on um, Dr. Ungozi Okonjo Uwela, the, the new DG of the WTO. You know, so this was trending, the hashtag Be Like Ungozi Challenge. And we found so many interesting pictures. I mean, this one blew my mind, the young girl, you know. I'm so excited about this challenge because, I mean, oh, Ungozi... Okay. You said? Lami, did you say something? So Ungozi Okonjo. No, I'm talking about the little girl. I said so pretty. She's so pretty. Like Ungozi Okonjo Awela is not your, is not bossy challenge, is not silhouette challenge where people are going naked and all of that. So for me, the people jumped on this trend, yeah, you know, it, it, it gives me hope that yes, we still have a lot of people that are willing to do the right thing and, you know, to, to emulate people like her that has, she's put in the, she's put in a lot of work. Some people were saying that people are said, congratulating Nigeria instead of congratulating her, Ngozi Okonjo Iwela. I was just wondering in my head, if it were to be, if Ngozi Okonjo Iwela was not, you know, she didn't have the amount of exposure that she has, you know, that has gotten her to where she is today. I mean, if she was just confined to the educational structure of Nigeria, everything about Nigeria, would she ever, ever rise to that point? The answer is no. So really, Nigeria, we have a long way to go. We have brilliant minds here, but we are so, so under... Uh, our potential is under maximized or something. I don't know how to put it. All right, so we'll take a break. Today we're talking tact, right? We want to learn how to use tact to tackle our government. Stay with us. We'll be right back.